everyone and thank you for watching Wikipedia World videos. In this lecture we will talk about billing schedule and billing plans. As mentioned before, the billing date field in the sales order controls the date on which the item becomes due for billing. If you want to execute the billing transaction for a customer only on particular dates, you can control it by setting up a billing schedule. A billing schedule is similar to a factory calendar and accessed using the same transaction. However, you can define a specific schedule a calendar containing the dates on which billing is permitted. Later, you assign the calendar to the customer master record. To define a billing schedule, use the SAP menu pass, logistics, sales and distribution, master data, others, Billing schedule, transaction code, skull. Define a factory calendar and press on change button. Click on change button. And you can create a new calendar by pressing create button. When you create the new calendar, you can provide your own factory calendar ID and a description. If you want to set up a billing schedule on certain dates of the month, click the special rules option. Create a new rule in the from and to date fields at specific date required. Flag as a workday and save it with a meaningful description like my calendar. It's just for example. And press create. The billing schedule calendar is to be assigned in the customer master in the sales data on the billing document tab, as we showed earlier. For example, we can go to create new session and go to XD02 transaction and we must go to sales area data and billing documents tab. And here we see that in this field we can assign a created factory calendar. When a sales document is created, system checks the next workday from the calendar and copies it in the billing date field. Thus the document becomes due for billing when the billing date is reached. Now we'll talk about billing plans. Billing plans are useful when the customer is to be billed over a period of time or in installments. A billing plan is a schedule for billing the customer. It specifies how much is to be billed and when. There are two types of billing plans. Each is based on a different business scenario. Periodic billing. In this scenario, the customer is to be billed a fixed amount regularly over a period of time. An example is lease under which the same rent is charged at the beginning of every month. Milestone billing. The customer is charged a portion of the total price when certain milestones are achieved. For example, during execution of a project, a certain percentage of the total project value is built on completion of each project phase. When a sales document is created, the item category determines whether it is relevant for a billing plan. Based on the settings, the amount to be billed is determined along with the date. We will now discuss the major steps in customization for the two different types of billing plans.
The first step is to set up the controls for the billing plan type. Go to SPRO transaction, click on SCP reference IMG. Go to Sales and Distribution, Billing, Billing Plan. Define Billing Plan, plan Types. From the Activity Code, choose Define periodic billing. You can create a new billing plan type by specifying a two character code and description. Or we can copy it as a reference and provide our um, two digit code, Z5. The following are some of the fields relevant for periodic billing. Start date and end date. You can select rules to govern the start and end date of the plan. For example, the date could be today's date, rule 01 or contract start date, S2. You can see here the list of all possible entries. Verizon. This specifies the rule used to determine the last planned billing date. This rule generally specifies a baseline date and a duration. For example, Rule 10 specifies today's date plus one year, as would be the case for an annual lease contract. Next section, Billing Data Date Proposal deals with proposing the next date for billing. Next billing date. This rule controls how the next date is proposed by the system. For example, the next date could be determined by rule 11. And this is last of months for billing date plus one month. Dev billing date. This rule accommodates deviations and additional rules needed to determine the next billing date. For example, if you want to bill the customer three days before the end of the month, then you can specify a custom rule that subtracts three days from the end of the month and determines the date. You can leave this field blank if it is not applicable. Calendar ID you can attach your custom calendar so the system can use it to determine the working schedule for the year. Next important tab is control data. And we have the fields online order in advance and automatic correspondent dates. Online order. If you want the system to determine the billing plan dates automatically, at the time of document creation, you can select this checkbox. In advance checkbox. If you select this, it means that the customer is to be built in advance. If you leave it blank, the default rule is to build in areas. For example, if you want to charge monthly rent at the beginning of the month, you should select this checkbox. After providing all necessary changes, save your billing plan type. Now we can go back and we are ready to define billing plan type for milestone billing. Since the billing dates are determined by events of and milestones, there are no rules to determine dates, as well as the case in periodic billing. Some of the fields that you saw in the periodic billing setup do not appear here. Create your new billing type as a reference. 
The important difference in milestone billing setup is the reference billing plan number in the field reference billing plan number. It contains the detailed schedule of the milestone billing. In the next step, we will maintain the details in the reference billing plan, such as the exact dates and the amount. Now save your changes and we have a warning message that an entry already exists with the same key. So we must specify unique key. The same. Seven. Yeah, seven. And press change, save and save your transport request. Press back. Next step in configuration is maintain date proposals for billing plan type. This step is applicable only if you are setting up milestone billing plans. Use menu pass, sales and distribution, billing, billing plan, maintain date proposals for billing plan types. Clicking the Maintain Date button leads you to the Date Proposal Maintenance screen. You can specify the billing dates for each milestone. And now we can return to Customization and talk about Data Categories Customization. The date category field gives more information about the date appearing in the billing plans. For this setting, you can define date categories for the billing plan. You can assign rules and add blocks to stop any billing before a milestone is reached. Use the menu pass Sales and Distribution, Billing, Billing Plan, Define and Assign date categories maintain data category for billing plan type on this screen you can specify the categories of dates that you plan to use in each billing plan type double click on some billing type And you will see detailed information here. In the proposal for the date description, you can select the date description, such as the monthly rent and the periodic billing, or contract sign date, assembly completion, or other project milestone dates. In the billing data section, the billing rule. Field controls whether the billing will be on percentage basis or a value basis. The billing block field specifies the block applied against the billing date in the plan. Since there can be several date categories assigned to a billing plan type, you assign a default date category in the next step. Go to Allocate Data Category. Assign a default date category for your billing plan type here. And after that, we can go to the next step. And next step is Maintain Rules for Date Determination. Follow Menu Pass Sales and Distribution. Billing, Billing Plan, Define Rules for Determining Dates, Create a new entry or copy from an existing rule, 
we will cut the in as existing rule. The field baseline date. You have to specify the rule for determining the baseline date. Use the time period and time unit fields to specify whether the time is to be added or subtracted from the baseline to arrive at the billing date. You can specify the unit of time in days, weeks, months or years. In the calendar ID field, you can also assign a calendar for this rule. At this stage, you have completed the definition of the billing plan. The next step is to assign the billing plan to the sales documents and item categories. Assignment of billing plan types. Two settings are involved in assignments. You assign the billing plan type at both the sales document level and the item category level. Use the menu pass Sales and Distribution, Billing, Billing Plan. Assign billing plan types for sales document types. For this setting, you can select sales document type and assign billing plan type. After that, you can save your changes and save transport request. Next step will be assign billing plan type to item category. Click on assign billing plan types for item categories. And here you, you can find your item category and assign a billing plan type to that item category. After that, you can press save button. And we have a warning message here. The billing plan type only required in if relevant for billing accounting to billing plan. Choose I and save your transport request. Go back to the SAP Easy Access menu. In this lecture, we have learned how to customize a billing schedule and how to customize billing plans. In our next lecture, we will talk about rebate process. Thank you for watching Edupedia World Videos.